Hello, this is Brian Rowe from Mythic MTG Tech. I'm going to be talking to you today about a limited deck tech. This is from the M13 pre-release. I played in one this last weekend up here at Card Kingdom in Seattle. I went three and one. In fact, I only lost two games and all of the matches that I won were 2-0. Um, very happy with this deck overall, but let's just uh, jump into it. The land base here, running 17 lands. Um, we're looking at nine forests. Very, very heavy on the forest side of things. Um, looking at six planes, which white is my support color here, and then two sources of red. I'm splashing red mountains for only two cards but both those cards are just incredible cards to have uh, in looking at the land in retrospect i'm very happy with 17 land uh, 17 land is kind of the midpoint that i want to be at in most limited decks sometimes i'll go down to um, 16 or 15 depending on the curve and the casting cost and once in a while i'll go up to um, 18 but 17 is really kind of that central point um, I'm if I was going to do this again I would drop one of the forest to add one more mountain I think that without a way to go fetch the mountain I really want three different ways to get a mountain and that only caused me a little bit of problems in one game so let's look at the red cards and why I decided to splash red uh, the format does not have a lot of instant removal so Searing Spear, which is really your new Incinerate, um, is just a wonderful removal common, and it was, it uh, served me very well in some of the games. And then one of the bombs that I got, uh, really powerful cards and limited here, um, was Chandra Firebrand. And Chandra's plus one ability to deal one damage to target creature or player is just incredible. Um, the other... The other thing that I've got outside of the two main colors was an Acroma's Memorial. Now, Acroma's Memorial is really interesting. When I, I pulled this, I would played it a little bit in EDH. I thought it was an incredible card, and I think I overestimated it a little bit in Limited. It's, it's very good. The abilities that you get off of it here are Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black, and Protection from Red. So that's a lot of very powerful ability, but it's well worth noting that lifelink is not on that list. And if your opponent's got some evasion creatures that can still get by your creatures, it doesn't swing the game the way that something like a Bane Slayer Angel would. This is a very strong card. I'm not unhappy with it at all, but I, I think I overestimated it just a little bit in building the deck. Now let's take a look at the white. Pacifism in here is a solid form of removal for stopping creatures, slowing them down. Um, it's not as incredible as it is in formats where there aren't as many playable enchantments as there are in this one. A lot of people are main decking enchantment removal, but it, it's still a decent solid form of removal. Uh, Glorious Charge I have in here as a combat trick. It's one of the weaker combat tricks and one of the weaker cards in the deck. I would, would have been very happy to upgrade this for something else. Uh, a Johnny's Sun Striker is a 2-2 two -two lifelinker. I really like lifelink on the 2-2. Two -two. I don't like the fact that this is too white. Probably a little bit of a mistake including it in this deck since I'm so heavy green and I'm splashing a third color. Although I, I got lucky on the land draws and had no trouble casting it. It's normally though, if I had a little bit deeper pool, I would have avoided this for something with a one white and a colorless. Um, Crusader of Ordric is very nice and combos very well with several of the other cards that I've got in this deck. Power and toughness equals the number of cards that, or number of creatures you control. Uh, this is wonderful early game and late game. It just gets larger and larger. Very happy with it. Combos very well with the Knight Attendant, a 2 2 first striker for three that brings in a 1 1. This works really well in this deck and it works really well with the Crusader. Uh, now, this is one of the all-stars of the deck. I threw this in here thinking that it was going to be a little slow at four casting costs. The environment seems much slower than I had thought. It's definitely slower than AVR currently, Avacyn Restored Draft. 
or sealed, and getting to the four casting cost is not that difficult. There are also a pretty good amount of enchantments in, in the environment, so if people are playing those enchantments, this can often be a two-for-one. It's... It works really well against everything except for the black pro-white creatures that are out there. That was the only time I decided to remove it was on a was with a heavy black deck that was relying on some pro-white creatures. Healer of the Pride. Uh, this is one of the stronger cards in the deck for the particular strategy I was going for. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain two life. This can start to swing races. Uh, my curve is a little bit on the high side, so being able to get this down on turn three or turn four and then uh, gain some life as I put my larger creatures in play was extremely beneficial. This also works very well with uh, the knight that we saw earlier that put a additional 1-1 one, one creature into play, so that's four life right there. Prized Elephant. Since I'm playing green-white, this is a 4-4 four, four for 4, and the Trample was actually pretty relevant in this particular um, day's matches. Paying one green to be able to give it Trample uh, gave me a distinct advantage versus a Stuffy Doll in my last round, and having the Trample is just a nice ability. I didn't think that I would end up paying it much, other than a Treat it more like a 4-4 vanilla, but getting through an extra point or two of damage was very, very nice. Now we're seeing why I played green. Um, Rancor is just incredible. It, it originally was printed as a common and was amazing. Here in this set, it's printed as an uncommon and turns all of your um, creatures into very aggressive, powerful creatures. Uh, this is the reason to consider even main decking at some enchantment removal in limited or at least citing it in against green decks because this one card adds so much to the power of all the other cards out there. They clearly put a race in this set to help deal with the power of Rancor. And Rancor is clearly an easy first pick if I'd been drafting and sealed. I was very happy to see it. Uh, Prey Upon I have in here, just as a form of removal, my creatures overall are a little bit larger than my opponents, actually significantly larger, and the removal was very useful. Arbor Elves are here for acceleration. As you saw, I had the Chroma's Memorial and a little bit higher casting cost curve, uh, so I do have a pair of them in here and an Elvis Elvish Arch Druid to kind of buff them up and add significant mana acceleration if I need it. You're probably wondering at this point why I'm trying to accelerate this much, but the reason is is that my deck gets significantly better at the higher end of the curve. And when I say say high end, I only have two things at seven, although that's pretty high for uh, limited. But my larger three, four, five drops tend to work very well together. Um, the primal. Hunter Beast is an ideal target for Rancor. 3-3 three, three, Hexproof is just great. It prevents some of those two-for-ones that you see when somebody attempts to put an enchantment out on a creature and then the creature gets destroyed in response. I'm very happy with this creature. Uh, when I get to draft, I'm definitely going to mid-range pick this. Garruk's pack leader was incredible in this deck. Uh, the 4-4 four, for four, 5 is not bad, but as you noticed, many of my creatures have a 3 or higher power, uh, which allowed me to draw sig a significant number of extra cards. It's not as powerful as, say, tri um, Triumph of the Ferocious, I believe it is, from Avacyn Restored, uh, but it does have a body. It's a 4-4, and 4-4 is a significant body in this format. The Sentinel Spider, 4-4, Vigilant, and Reach. Uh, Reach was slightly uh, useful in one game, being able to stop flyers. This format is not as heavy in flyers as something like Avacyn Restored, but 4-4, 4-5, and Vigilance was great. Uh, Predator's Rampage uh, is... I really wish this card had Trample on it. It is not as strong as Overrun was, um, but it is a very strong card. It's well worth inclusion and a high pick in decks. And the other stuff, things that I am ramping into here is Vasswood Gorger, a 5-6 body. is one of the larger bodies in the set. 
especially for a common. I was able to throw Rancor on this one game and turn it into a 7-6 with Trample, which is incredible. The other card that I have in here at the 7 casting cost that was worth the ramp is Elder Scale Worm. I, I was really worried that I would not live long enough to make it to 7 casting cost, and in the one round that I lost, um, I had missed a land drop two turns in a row where this card would have saved me in game two. Uh, in the other two games where I got this card out, uh, in one game it completely stopped my opponent's attack and allowed me to swing the game. In the other one, it, it was less relevant uh, because they had a removal in the form of an O-ring um, for it, but it still must be dealt with when it hits the board or you're going to live and be able to swing the game back. And the deck is uh, built around getting up to those higher casting cost items and swinging the game with life gain, stabilizing life, or the improvements to a with a Chroma's Memorial to all of my creatures. So overall, I was very happy with the way the tournament turned out at three and one. And if I were to play the environment again, I would still try to cut the overall casting cost down a little bit. This curve was a little bit high and I would put in a, another mountain over a forest. I, I also wanted to go over a few of the cards that I pulled from Limited that I thought were actually pretty amazing but I ended up not playing. The other colors that I really wanted to play were black and blue. Vampire Nighthawk is a clear number one pick in draft formats and wonderful in this format. Lifelink, Flying, and Death Touch 2-3 body for 3 is really good. The double black though does make it really tough to splash, so you got to have a strong black deck to play it, and I did not have the strong black deck even despite having a Mutilate which is a really nice swing card and also lets you get into some of your higher casting cost stuff. Um, I have not gotten a chance to play Mark of the Vampire yet. Uh, it was played against me in one game and could have easily swung. I, I don't normally like playing enchantments, but plus two, plus two, and lifelink uh, has the ability to severely swing games and being able to put this on a flyer, which black has a lot of, means that you're often going to get through I like this as the four spot in a quicker deck or as a four spot in kind of a mid-range deck to try to um, swing the damage back. And the other card I was really excited about from a limited perspective is Arctic Avian. Uh, a 2-1 flyer with plus one plus one as long as you control a planes and the ability for one plane, one white mana to give it lifelink. This is another possibly incredible card in the format. I don't think it's as strong as a Miss Raven is from Avacyn Restored, but it's it definitely can win some races in and of itself. Unfortunately, my blue is just way too weak. That's my review for Mythic MTG Tech. I hope that you guys have some fun this next week playing M13 Limited. As far as this set goes as a limited uh, environment, I really, really enjoy it. Thanks.